All right, we are live. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, we're coming live to you from our headquarters in downtown Westerly, Rhode Island, Westerly Life's headquarters. Uh, as always, you can go to our blog at westerlylife.com. Uh, you can get all of the up-to-date information as it comes in. You can go to our dedicated page on our blog. Just tap on the virus link uh, at the bottom. That'll take you to the COVID-19 page where we are going to have links uh, to today's news broadcast. That's where we put our video. There are various other links on there as well to the Rhode Island Department of Health, the CDC, and we have our restaurant takeout and to-go matrix, uh, which you can tap on. And that is provided courtesy of the Ocean Community Chamber of Commerce. So thank you for doing all of that hard work to help people know which restaurants are doing takeout uh, as well as curbside pickup. Okay, we don't have anybody tuned in just yet, uh, which is strange. I'm just going to go ahead and do a quick check. Oh, there we go. People are tuning in now. I wanted to make sure we were streaming live. Sometimes things do happen. So we're going to get right into it. Uh, I have been doing a lot of research over the past couple of days. We do have a, a lot to cover. Uh, not a lot of new news at the local level. Uh, as that comes in, again, we'll get that out to you. You can always go to westerlyri.gov to find out the absolute latest. So uh, we're going to follow our format being start at the federal level. There is some good news that came out uh, this morning regarding the stimulus package. We're going to go ahead and touch on that. Uh, state level, a few things I do want to touch on. Uh, the governor will be going live today at 2.30 p.m. today and tomorrow at 2.30 and on Friday, she'll be going back to the 1 p.m. schedule. So we'll get more information from the governor at 2.30. I do have some, uh, some graphics I want to go over with you. I've been doing a lot of research uh, over the past couple days trying to track how this virus has been going uh, from Ground Zero, which was in China, and as it's been moving across the planet, over Europe and into the US. Uh, so I do have uh, some charts that we're gonna go over and show you just how I'm interpreting the data, how I think things are going to be going. Uh, so that's what we're gonna be doing, so let's get into it. So at the federal level, uh, the White House and Senate leaders reached a deal early Wednesday on a massive $2 trillion stimulus bill to combat the economic impact of the coronavirus outbreak. This is great news. Uh, there was a lot of negotiating going on, and it seems like they finally have reached an agreement. So Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer called it the largest rescue package in American history, and I have to agree with that. Uh, an earlier draft seen Tuesday would provide cash payments of up to $1,200 for individuals, $2,400 for married couples, and $500 per child. This would be reduced if an individual makes more than $75,000 or a couple makes more than $150,000. All this information I am pulling from CNBC.com. Uh, it's a great financial website, a great tool, so you can find out what is happening with the economy and financial news. I highly recommend that website. Uh, in other news, this is a big one. India's prime minister ordered a lockdown, this happened yesterday, of the entire country all 1.3 billion people for 21 days. Uh, that is a huge undertaking. Uh, I was looking at the numbers. Uh, India has remained, as far as the confirmed cases, rather low on the totem pole, which I have to say is a, a good thing. I want to pull up the numbers right now. Uh, we do have some people watching. Uh, again, forgive me, I am self-producing. I am constantly looking down at my notes and doing all of this stuff, so bear with me. Uh, I do try to find these numbers for you. I probably could have found this. Oh, here we go. 606 confirmed cases in India. Uh, so this is a huge uh, step in the right direction for them to try and stop it at 606. Go back to the notes. Uh, this is big, too. New York City just to the south of us, they are considering closing parks, playgrounds, and streets to enforce social distancing. Now, what this is telling me is people aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing voluntarily. We have to do these things in order to stop the transmission. When I get into the graphics, 
uh, you'll, ex you'll understand why we need to stop this transition because the exponential growth that is happening right now is literally off the charts. One of my charts is just punched through the top, and we'll get to that. Okay, at the state level, uh, we did touch on this a little bit. The press conference with Governor Gina Raimondo is going to happen today at 2.30 as well as tomorrow. She will be going back to the 1 p.m. time slot starting on Friday. The Rhode Island Department of Labor and Training is being inundated with unemployment insurance claims. Uh, do not give up. If you were heeded the advice I gave you last week and you were a restaurant worker and you did it earlier rather than later, you are in the system, it'll be easier for you. If you waited too long, it'll be more difficult, but do not give up. Keep trying. Uh, their phone banks are being flooded with calls. Uh, the website did crash over the weekend. That is going to happen as you're seeing the stress on the infrastructure that is happening right now on the internet and our server structures. It's being taxed, it's being stretched. You may have seen things uh, happen little by little if you're watching Netflix or some other streaming service. Things have been being bogged down or buffering. Uh, last night there was an issue with Facebook where videos were not being shown in the mobile feeds. That has soon been fixed and we're very happy to the folks at Facebook for fixing that because right now uh, that this is our biggest communication tool are the live streams and we're all using the Facebook servers. Luckily they are prepared for this uh, and they would be able to spin up more servers if need be so just be patient. The internet is being taxed very very heavily right now especially with the distance learning that is going on. You have all these students and teachers uh, signing in, logging in, all at the same time. That is going to have a huge effect on the internet infrastructure as well. So keep all that in mind. Uh, as of this broadcast, Rhode Island has 124 confirmed cases. Uh, that, of course, is going to go up. We're going to find out more uh, at the 2.30 p.m. press conference today. Okay, this came from the governor beginning yesterday at 7 a.m., so it's in effect now. Anyone returning to Rhode Island by plane, with the exception of public safety, healthcare professionals, and pilots, must immediately self-quarantine for 14 days. This is huge. This is bigger than any one individual, okay? We do not know if you're carrying the virus with you. You do not know that if you're carrying the virus with you. The right thing to do is to self-quarantine for 14 days. What does self-quarantine mean? That's exactly what it means, is you're staying in your home for 14 days. You're not going to the grocery store. You're not going to the liquor store. You are remaining in your home on your property. And this is going to tie into the out-of-state plates and people with second homes in the westerly area. Uh, if you're watching Caswell Cook, we've been saying this from Monday when I started seeing more and more state plates show up. Uh, you need, if you're coming from out of state, of course, and you have a second home, this is your plan B. You have every right to come here to your second home. I'd be doing the same thing if I wanted to get myself and or my family to a safe place. If I had a plan B, I would be using that plan B. No one is faulting you for that. Do that. What you need to do, and what the town manager uh, put out a statement yesterday, this basically we're asking you to stay in your homes, self quarantine yourself. Uh, let's see, I'm I'm self producing, so I'm trying to get the best shot here. Give me a second. Okay, you need to self quarantine yourself, you and your family, because you do not know if you're bringing the virus with you if you're coming from out of state. We, we were being very nice in the beginning, and now it's starting to get to the point where we're going to be asking you very, very seriously, do this stuff. I'm leaving the office to go home last night, and I'm seeing a Massachusetts plate screwing through downtown. I'm following them. They look at me like I have two heads because I'm on a bike. And where are they going? They're trying to beat closing time at the liquor store. If I'm seeing an out-of-state plate, I should not see you on the roads at 9 o'clock. Please stay in your homes. There are people out there who are willing to do your grocery shopping for you. Go out and do things for you so you can remain in your homes. 
Right now we're asking you, but this is going to get to a point where it's not going to be asking anymore if you're not going to be staying in your homes. Please, the full-time residents of Westerly, we have had a very low incidence uh, of confirmed cases in Washington County and Westerly. That has to do with our tourist uh, status. We are a huge tourist town. We haven't had people coming in this time of year. It's historically very, very slow. Now people are coming in. We do not know if you are carrying the virus. You do not know, unless you've been tested, if you're carrying the virus. So Caswell said it last night. He was very emphatic about it. I agree with him 100%. It is your right to come here if you have a second home. You own that second home. That's your right. It's your plan B. But do everyone else a favor and self-quarantine yourself for 14 days. I know everyone doing live streams, we're going to be saying this. We're going to sound like broken records. There's a reason we're saying it. And when we get to the chart, you'll understand why. Okay, at the local level, uh, not much has changed again with closures and restrictions. Uh, we're going to go over those real quick just to remind you. Uh, the town hall is closed for public access without an appointment. For more information, go to westerlyri.gov and you can find out all of the details right there. The dog park at the animal shelter will remain open, but we ask that visitors practice social distancing of six feet. Yes, the dogs need to be walked. We understand that. You need to get out, get some fresh air. But do not congregate in a group when you're at the dog park. Please maintain the six foot uh, social distance standard. Grocery stores remain open, but some, I'm going to say at this point, most have modified their hours. Uh, and they have set hours for seniors only. Officers will be making increased checks of grocery stores and all businesses just to make sure that everybody is doing their part. This is still voluntary. We do not want to go to what India has done, what New York is considering doing. If everybody does their part, it will not get to that. Let's act like adults and do what the experts are recommending so we can stop the transmission of this virus. All gyms and workout facilities are to remain closed until further notice. All Rhode Island schools will remain closed until April 3rd, 2020. Districts will arrange distance learning for all students. This went into effect on Monday, and we've been hearing a lot on the other live streaming shows. Uh, Christine Cook was on uh, Ben Barber's show yesterday describing how it's been going. Like any new technology, we're... We are familiar with launching new technology. There's always going to be hiccups. Uh, but what everyone is doing from the students to the teachers to the administrators, they're rolling with the punches. Every challenge they are getting through. Uh, on Friday morning, we're going to be speaking with uh, Dr. Mark Garceau, the superintendent of the Westerly Schools, right here on Westerly Life at 10 a.m. And uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about how the rollout went this week, uh, the challenges they saw, how they're overcoming those challenges, and the plan uh, for the future. So there'll be some really good information. So tune in Friday morning at 10 a.m. Okay, hairdressers and barber shops are closed. Restaurants, pubs, bars, coffee shops, they're not allowed to have dine-in. This has been going on for a week now, a little over a week. That goes until officially March 30th. At that time, they're going to reassess and see what happens. Of course, takeout and curbside to go are still allowed. In Rhode Island, restaurants, if they have a liquor license already in place, they can sell beer and wine uh, to go with the food if the people are ordering food. That is allowed in Rhode Island. Uh, if you go to westerlylife.com, you can find the restaurant takeout and curbside uh, matrix provided by the Ocean Community Chamber of Commerce, and you can find out what restaurants are doing what. A lot of restaurants do have uh, online ordering, so take advantage of that as well. Let me go ahead and switch up some graphics here. So all town meetings will be canceled with the exception of town council meetings that may be required in order to implement necessary town response to COVID-19 or other emergency town business. And the town of Westerly is urging all residents to use online and mail services to pay your bills. Just to find out more, go to westerlyri.gov. 
The DMV will not have Friday service at the Westerly Town Hall until further notice. In Cranston, they are closed to appointment only. There are to be no gatherings of more than 10 people. This uh, is very, very important. Maintain that six-foot social distance and keep the gatherings to 10 people or less. The Westerly Senior Center is closed for all business except for lunch service. Lunches will be served as takeout only. Meals on Wheels service will continue as usual at this time. The Westerly Public Library is closed, according to the sign on their door, until April 4th. Uh, all programs have been canceled through April 4th as well. And they'll continue to communicate with everybody via their website, which is West westerlylibrary.org. And we're going to do our part here at Westerly Life to make sure you know that information. Any venue that has an event planned is directed to cancel or postpone those events until further notice. Uh, everyone is complying with that in town, uh, so that is not an issue. Uh, the Westerly Transfer Station will only accept household trash in town-approved bags, the orange bags, or single-stream recycling, which is the basics of bottles, cans, clean paper, and cardboard until further notice. Uh, commercial uh, service is uh, still open. Check the town website to find out more on that. Okay, from the Rhode Island, <clears throat> excuse me, the Rhode Island DEM, uh, this is a, a very important announcement because we're all using those Clorox wipes to keep surfaces clean and kill the virus if it is around. Flushing wipes, paper towels, and similar products down toilets will clog sewers and cause backups and overflows at wastewater treatment facilities creating an additional public health risk uh, during the coronavirus pandemic. So let's do our part. Do not flush that down the toilet. Uh, even though the label says it's flushable, that is true. It will go down the toilet, but it could get, could get clogged further on down the line, making a nightmare of a headache for uh, trying to take care of that situation. Okay, what I want to do... Thanks, Mia. Let me put up some graphics here. Uh, like I said, I've been doing a lot of my own research. Uh, not to say I don't trust what is going on out there. I do. Uh, numbers make sense to me. They always have. They tell a story. They paint a picture that we normally can't see just by looking at a situation. So that is what I've been doing. I've been just pouring over numbers and making these charts to help myself understand what is going on and where we're headed. It's helped me out immensely, so I'm going to pass this on to you as well. Uh, what we're looking at right now is I'm going to make this uh, full screen. Okay, this is China, Europe, and U.S. active cases. Now, the China graph may look like it's lower than the 80,000 plus that we've seen because this only starts at January 22nd. So the previous month data is not in this chart. And these are active cases, mind you. Uh, before then, they have probably uh, have been have recovered or, um, uh, the, or the other one. So China's in blue, Europe's in green, the U.S. is in red. Now what this chart is telling me, you can see the curve on the China graph, the blue one. Like we mentioned yesterday, it is what we've come to expect from this pandemic curve. It started off slow, it peaked, and now they're in the midst of their recovering. China right now, oh, let me get to it. There's a lot of data I'm looking at. Is at 91% recovered. But it took them three months to get to that point. The U.S., we are at of a 1% recovery rate right now of all cases. And they're in the red. You can see right there. Europe is at a 10% recovery rate, up from 8% yesterday. So you can see the wave, how it's going. It started in China as it worked through Asia, got to Europe. Another chart that I saw, which made a lot of sense to me, uh, was the path that it took. It started in China, and as it was moving through Europe, it just got funneled to a bottleneck because it was a, that's a huge um, band of travel from Asia was going through Europe. And then once it got through Europe, it exploded, kind of like a shotgun, went across the ocean, 
and came to the Americas. So that's kind of why we're seeing lower numbers, but they are going up in the U.S. And that's why you have those really high numbers through Europe. By the time they noticed what was happening, the infection had just spread because you have, again, it came from China, bottleneck in Europe, and then it shot out again. So that's why we're seeing those numbers in Europe that we're seeing. Uh, now, in order to make this chart make a little more sense to me, I decided how much deeper can we go? So what I did is I overlaid all of the charts. Let's go ahead and make that full screen. This tells a better story, in my opinion. So now we have China, the U.S., and Europe, all with a similar starting point. Now, what, and this is what I was saying, it was off the chart. Europe, I ran out of room. Uh, as you can see, this exponential growth that's happened in Europe, because of how the virus spread through Europe in that bottleneck I was talking about, they're just having this explosion in growth of confirmed and active cases. Now, if you look at the U.S., which is in red, it's eerily similar to Europe's track. But we are later on down the curve. So while China has a higher recovery rate, Europe is now at 10%. The U.S., we're only at 1%. What this leads me to believe is that we're in the beginning stages of this. That's what this data is telling me. Now, take this for what it's worth. I love numbers. I pour over numbers, and I was able to make these graphs to help this make sense uh, to me. I hope it makes sense to you. Why am I giving this information to you? Number one, you need to know it. Knowledge is power. If you know this information, you can be prepared for what is to come. So that's how, it, being in the US, that we're the last point in the globe from China, it's because going around the world, we know what's gonna happen. We can prepare ourselves for what's about to happen. So we can mitigate the, um, the worst part of this. So we need to pay attention to what's happening as it moves across, as this whole process moves. In my opinion, another one to two months. Again, take that for what it's worth. Uh, I'm being prepared. I'm preparing myself for what is to come. It's not the end of the world. I'm not saying that at all. Just be prepared. Okay, that's enough of the numbers. If you, you can go back and you can watch it again. I hope that helped break it down a little bit because it definitely helped uh, me out, especially with the uncertainty that everyone is feeling right now. This hopefully will give you a, a little outlook uh, as what is to come. All right, so I do need to do a little bit of promotion here. Let me go ahead and get uh, Nick up here. Uh, on Saturday of this week, the 28th, uh, we've partnered with Phoenix Dining and Entertainment to bring you a live music show. Now, of course, we are going to maintain the social distancing uh, at the venue. It's a rather large venue. We're only going to have a skeleton crew of staff to make sure that this stream uh, goes off without a hitch. Of course, we're going to have Nick Bossy there doing the show on Saturday night. We are also going to have, excuse me, uh, the manager, the sound guy, myself, the skeleton crew, too, live stream this show to you. Uh, Nick will be on Ben Barber's show tonight, The Social Distance Show. So check that out. You get a little insight into his set list, what he's going to be playing, uh, and basically the reason why we are going to be doing this for you. So pay attention to that. And I have something else. If you are a restaurant, uh, we're doing something huge with our website design division. Uh, we also design apps at Nomad Web Solutions. Uh, one of the big things right now, because in my opinion, this is going to be going on for longer than we think, is online ordering. Uh, if you're a restaurant and there's something you've added, wanted to add to your um, the way that your customer can contact you, uh, right now we are offering this service. All you have to do is pay for the monthly hosting and the initial setup costs for Apple and Google we're going to waive our design fee on our apps because in our apps, we do have that food ordering feature for you. Uh, we can go into more detail if there's something that you want to do. You can give me a call, 401-594-4095, extension 1, and we can get you up and running 
So you can have that online ordering feature. Uh, this is something that you could do now, take advantage of it. Our design fees can range up to $4,000 to build you that app. We're gonna waive that. This is for restaurants, new clients only. We want to help you out so you can get this feature uh, built and you can have it to help get that online ordering. Of course, it's not gonna end when this pandemic is over. That is something that you can now add uh, to uh, your, your, um, uh, your group of products that you have to keep in touch with your customers. Add it to your website. Now you have an app. You can help, you can keep in touch with your customers a lot easier that way through push notifications and various other features. And we can go over all that with you uh, when you do call in. Uh, something we want to do to help out the restaurants because there, there's going to be a lot of economic fallout when this whole thing is over. Uh, that's something we can all agree on. So right now, if you start to implement these technologies, when this is over and your door is open back up, you can hit the ground running and we can help you do that. Uh, you just have to go through life right now normal, as normal as you possibly can. Keep putting those things in place to help you down the road. What can I do right now to make my now down the road a little better? And this is how you can do all that. Uh, we've also been hard at work at Westerly Life. We are going to be launching two more websites. Uh, more on that to come. They're both in response uh, to this COVID-19 pandemic to help uh, local business and entrepreneurs and the residents here uh, pick up the pieces when this is all over and move forward. Uh, so keep keep watch. We will let you know when those websites are going to be launching and what they're going to be and how they're going to be able to help you out. Um, this is all in an effort to just help us move forward and when this is over to kind of put the pieces back to some degree of normalcy. Now, of course, it's not going to be the way it was. We have a new normal now, and a lot of that's going to carry over into the future. Uh, so if you get on board right now, if you are a business owner, implement some strategies right now. When this is over, you'll be set up for success. Okay. Well, that is all I have today. So I just do want to sign off the way I do every single time. Uh, talk about some personal uh, things that you can do to help calm your mind and help yourself and your family get through this the best that you can. Uh, if you're not taking care of yourself, that means your uh, mental well-being as well, you're really of no use to, you can't help other people out. And that's the thing, because we need to stick together. So it starts with you maintaining yourself so you can be of service to other people. It's the best way to do it. Uh, meditation is one of the biggest things that I do. I can't say anything bad about meditation. It's changed my life uh, 100%, and it can definitely help you out in these times of need. Just Google meditation apps. There's a whole slew of them, uh, and they're all pretty good. Um, so just check that out. Exercise, especially right now with the gyms being closed, is tough. It's back to basics. It's what I do. Push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups. Uh, I got my bike to keep me going. Um, go for a walk. Go for a hike. The Westerly Land Trust has amazing hiking trails. Uh, just maintain that six-foot distance when you're out there. Get some fresh air. Be out in nature. It definitely helps lift the spirits. Okay. And as usual, stay safe. Stay strong. Remain calm. Use the rational part of your brain, especially as things are definitely going to be getting worse as we move forward. It's going to take uh, a lot of... Uh, self-discipline and courage to maintain that rational part of your brain because fear uh, is a huge motivator. I want, you immediately want to peg yourself to survival mode, but remain calm, don't panic, and think through the situation, and you'll get through it like we all will. All right, so that's it for today. 2.30 p.m., Governor Gina Raimondo is giving her press conference. Uh, all the major news outlets will be showing that, uh, so definitely check that out. I'll probably go on live again later. Didn't do it last night. I was a little tired. Uh, but we'll go again live later on. So for Westerly Life, I'm Shane Belanger reminding you to enjoy your Westerly Life.